coming up on the Golden Key. I saw Santa there. Wait, did you say the hospital? Everyone okay? Well, how about I pray for your brother? I never thought much about Santa Claus praying for people. So I snuck up and dropped some gold coins into the socks of one of those girls. And then I ran off. Hey, Luke, what's another name for socks? Um, I don't really name my socks. A mean man put me and a lot of other Christians in jail. He even killed some Christians. Whoa, who would put Santa Claus in jail? Meet Santa shack thingy in the town square. Yeah, it's fun, you know. I wasn't planning. I was with my parents driving from the hospital, and I saw Santa there. They asked if I wanted to come talk to him before he leaves for the night, which is in a few minutes, it looks like. While they do some grocery shopping. Oh, cool. Wait, did you say the hospital? Everyone okay? Well, most of us, Veronica, but not Sam. He's real sick. Like hospital level sick. That's pretty sick, isn't it? Yeah, well, he's got a real high fever. Maybe a moment. I think you mean new moment. Oh, right, Peter. Yeah, that. Well, young man, I, I believe it's your turn. Come tell Santa what you want for Christmas this year. Oh, hey, guys. Gotta go see the big guy. Will you walk up with me? Oh, sure, Luke. Better hurry, Luke. It says on the sign that Santa leaves at 7 o'clock. And it's five minutes to seven. You're the very last kid in line. At least you won't have to hurry as much that way. Well, uh, are you my last children in line? No, thanks, Santa. Not us. We were just here with our friend Luke. Hey, Luke, you should ask Santa to make Sam better. Oh, yeah. That's better than asking for a Red Ryder BB gun. Young man, you'll shoot your eye out anyway. Oh, 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 oh. just kidding. Santa's seen that movie too. Wait, there's a movie? You, you, you didn't mean Ralphie and the. Uh, oh, never mind. Tell me about this Sam fellow. Someone you know? Yes, sir. He's my brother. Sam Schiller's his name, and he's super sick. Like he's in the hospital. Maybe with um, I mean that ammonia thing. I mean. It looks like he may be there for Christmas, and I'm scared, Santa. What if he gets sicker, and what if he dies? Well, my boy, I'm sorry. I, I have an idea, though. How about if Santa does something extra special for you and Sam? That'd be great, Santa. Like what? Well, first of all, I'd be happy to go visit Sam in the hospital, if you think he'd like it. Well, I don't know. He's older than me and all. He might be kind of embarrassed, but I actually think he'd like it a lot. What else, Anna? Well, how about I pray for your brother right now? Pray? Well, that would be great. I never thought much about Santa Claus praying for people. You, you didn't, eh? Well, my boy, you see, Santa has spent almost 2,000 years praying for people. What? That long? Sounds tiring. Well, it kind of is, son, but in, in a good way. I, I wouldn't miss it for the world. You know, I started praying when I was a young man, not not that many years older than yourself. You were a kid, Santa? I sure was. Walked and talked and had a mom and dad, <laughs> just like all of you. And out of the North Pole, they weren't elves or something? Uh, no, no. Oh, They gave me my name, but it wasn't Santa Claus. It was Nicholas, and I lived in a place called Myra. It's in modern-day Turkey. It was a modern-day Turkey? You lived in it? Man, I saw that coming a mile away. He means the country of Turkey, Luke. Oh. And I think he's talking about the fact that we get the name Santa Claus from Saint Nicholas. You know something about that, don't you, Luke? Well, I know a little about saints. See, 
I go to St. Mary's Church, not that far from here. I, I knew that, Luke. You did? Wow, I guess you are Santa Claus and all. And more importantly, a, a saint in the church. A and another thing I know is what it's like to be afraid when someone you love is sick. Uh, only I bet your brother will be okay. I went through a rough time as a boy because my parents died of a terrible sickness that was affecting a lot of people in our land at the time. Your parents? Boy, I didn't know how you stay so jolly, Santa. Well, uh, I stay joyful, my boy, because of the joy of knowing our Lord. It's a great joy, you know, and it started with my uncle, who was a priest. He was the one who taught me the most about Jesus and inspired me to become a priest, too. And, of course, being joyful doesn't always mean being happy. It's more like a sense of peace in knowing God is with us. I certainly wasn't happy when my parents died, though my uncle helped me through those hard days, and my parents happened to be wealthy. I mean, they had a lot of money. Oh, so that's where you get all those toys you deliver. Oh, ho, ho, well, Luke, not exactly. You see, my parents taught me something very important when I was a boy, and I lived it out for the rest of my life. What's that? That whatever we have is a gift from God. And God wants us to share, especially with those in need, those who don't have as much. And as I grew up, and later when I became a priest, I, I tried to continue to do that. Wait, Santa, you're a priest? Like Father Bill at our parish? Well, yes, Luke, I am. In fact, I, I became a bishop, one of the youngest priests ever to be a bishop. You're a bishop? Like the one that comes and visits our church sometimes? With the long staff that looks like a candy cane? And the pointy hat? Luke. <laughs> what? It is. No, you're definitely right, my boy. But we're getting ahead of the story. I decided, after my parents died, that I was going to make sure that money helped those in need. There are a lot of ways I saw that come to pass. For example, one poor man had three daughters. They were so poor, he didn't have the money to get them married. And they might have ended up entering into slavery if, if no one helped them. Whoa, slavery? You mean working for some mean person with no pay? That's right, Luke. It would have been a terrible thing. Now, I wanted to stop that from happening, of course. But I didn't want to make a big show of it and make that man and his family feel like they owed me a lot for what I did. I just wanted them to be happy, to be free of that worry. You understand? Yeah, I think so. W well, so one night I snuck up into their house. Uh, let me ask you something, Luke. What happens to your socks when you wear them all day with your shoes on? My socks? I don't know. Should I check? Well, I expect they get a little stinky. Oh, that. Does that happen to other people, too? Or did you just know that about me, Santa? It happens to a lot of folks. So in my days on Earth, we all took off our socks at night and washed them by hand. We didn't have a clothes dryer, either, so we hung them up in the window, or maybe by the fireplace to dry. Seems like a good plan. We thought so, so I snuck up and dropped some gold coins into the socks of one of those girls, and then I ran off. Of course, she and her family were happy in the morning to find she would be free. <gasps> That's cool. Hey, Luke, what's another name for socks? Um, I don't really name my socks. No, Luke, what else do people call socks sometimes? <laughs> Maybe stockings? Oh, stockings, like the kind Santa fills at Christmas. Uh, that's right, Luke. That's where that tradition comes from. Oh, wow. I never heard that before. So what about the other girls? Did you do the same thing with their stockings? Well, uh, yes and no. The next girl, yes. But that third girl must have had some smelly feet. She didn't have her stockings in the window. So I had to think long and hard about how to get that money to her without waking anyone up. Hmm. Did she have any clothes hanging in the window with pockets in them? 
<laughs> uh, uh, no son, she, she didn't. So I climbed up on the roof and dropped those coins down there. Chimney? Down the chimney. Did you come down the chimney yourself or just drop the coins? Well, Luke, just the coins at that time. But you're right about the tradition of Santa coming down chimneys uh, started there. That's really cool. Or really hot if there's a fire in the fireplace. Yes, one has to be careful with chimneys, Peter. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, at any rate, I became a priest, you know, and eventually did become a bishop, as I said. And you got to wear the hat? I got to wear the hat, Luke, yes. In fact, that hat is something all bishops have worn for a long time. It, it's called a mitre, just like that staff is called a crozier. And it's really supposed to look like something called a shepherd's crook. That half circle at the end is used to rescue... what? Oh, I know that. Lambs. We used to have lambs on our farm. So, you know, sometimes they need rescuing. Yeah, but how did you have time to take care of all those lambs when you were busy being a bishop? Seems like a lot to ask. <laughs> well, my boy, I didn't use that staff or crozier to, to catch lambs. It's uh, symbolic. Do you, do you know what that means? Sore love. Well, it means it's supposed to make you think of a shepherd more than because it actually used like a shepherd would. You see, uh, Jesus is called the good shepherd, and he left the bishops and, by extension, priests, of the church to do his work on earth. He's the good shepherd because he takes care of his people, the sheep of his flock, he called them. And the bishop is supposed to do that too, uh, not so much to save them from falling into a hole or something, but to guide them toward Jesus for the salvation of their souls. Yeah, that's important. Plus, you bring presents. <laughs> that too, Luke. But if you've ever seen old paintings or drawings of St. Nicholas, you know they often show me in my bishop's mitre or hat, and often in red. They do the same thing with my bishop's chasuble or robes. Now, who wears a red suit and hat that you see around Christmas time? Well, besides Spider-Man... That's more of a mask than a hat, Luke. Yeah, he means Santa Claus. I know, I know. I was just kidding. So you're saying the way you dress now, that came from the way St. Nicholas dressed? I am saying that, Luke. You bet. St. Nicholas, that's me. Well, I lived over 1,700 years ago. And in all those years, there were many stories and lots of devotion to me as a saint. And when St. Nicholas stories and devotions came to America, they changed over time to Santa Claus. So, when I see Santa, I'm really saying St. Nick? You've got it, my boy. I got to be known as a friend to children, the patron saint of children. In fact, because of another story, this one's kind of, uh, as they say nowadays, intense. All right, I'm ready. I can handle it. I'm sure you can, Luke. So you see, a very bad man had killed three boys and put them in a tub. Well, I knew about it, and I made a journey to that man's house, and with God's great power through prayer, I was able to bring those boys back to life and lead them safely back to their parents. Wow, what happened to the man? Uh, well, in some stories, you hear of me putting him in chains and making him come with me to bring sticks or coal uh, to naughty children. Sticks or coal? Why those? Well, they're also just symbolic. They represent fire. And I suppose you know that the Bible and the church tell us that unrepentant sinners go to a place of everlasting fire. Again, that's a symbolic way of talking about it. Santa, do you have that man on a chain with stuff to remind people of that, that bad place? Well, Luke, do you see him around here anywhere? Well, no. Unless he's Peter there. Hey, Luke. No, it's not Peter, although some stories and pictures have me traveling with someone called Black Peter and bring sticks and coal, but that name is a play on words. Peter, of course, was Jesus' apostle and the first pope. Black Peter would be something like the Pope of 
madness. Some pictures show me with a demon or even the devil on a chain to show he's conquered by me through God's power. But again, those are really just... Symbolic? I get it, Santa. <laughs> That's good, Luke. Well, uh, another interesting thing that happened to me was being put in jail. Whoa, who would put Santa Claus in jail? Did someone not want you coming down the chimney? <laughs> uh, no, Luke, uh, uh, nothing like that. No, a mean man had become emperor, like a king of the Roman Empire where I lived. He put me and a lot of other Christians in jail. He even killed some Christians. I stayed in jail for a few years. That's so bad. He should have gone to jail. Well, after him, another man became emperor, and his name was Constantine. I bet Veronica, Claire, or Peter know what happened to him. He became the first Christian emperor and made it legal to be Christian for the first time in the empire. That's right, Veronica. So I was released from prison and was able to go back to being a bishop. And I was able to continue to serve people as bishop for many more years. I died on December 6th in the year 343 A.D. You died? You don't seem dead to me. Oh, Luke, you know how saints work. They aren't really dead. <laughs> Claire is right, Luke. Saints are more alive than you are. Think about Jesus after he was resurrected. He could do things like walk through walls. Can you do that, Santa? Luke, the saints perfected in heaven are able to do many miraculous things through God's power. I assumed you knew that about Santa Claus. Well, you have a point there. That's why December the 6th is celebrated as the Feast of St. Nicholas all over the world. It's been ever since my mortal death. Yeah, I kind of knew that. I think we've had parties at church before, and people talk about it and stuff. <laughs> yes, and over the years, my feast day became one of the most popular in the whole church year. There would be big festivals, and I'd ride in on a big white horse. All of that still goes on in other countries. Don't forget the shoes, Santa. Santa has his shoes, Veronica. Oh, I get it. You're reminding Santa that you want shoes for Christmas. Got it. No, Luke. She's talking about putting shoes in your window for St. Nicholas Day. Really on the eve of St. Nicholas Day. That's right, Peter and Claire. Still today, and for hundreds and hundreds of years, children have put their shoes in the windowsill on the night before December 6th. Kind of like the stockings, right? Do they find gold in them? Sort of. Many times they find chocolate coins wrapped in gold, or they sometimes find gifts. So, how come you come on Christmas Eve, too? The night before Christmas? Well, Luke, that's a bit newer of a tradition. The Dutch people, when they came to America, well, most of them were not Catholic, but they still had a great love for St. Nicholas. So, they brought me to America with them, and kept calling me by my name in their language, that is, Sinterklaas. Wait, that sounds a lot like Santa Claus. I think that's the point, Luke. Right you are, Claire. The name Santa Claus comes right from Sinterklaas, and many of the Dutch didn't want to keep celebrating what they thought of as a Catholic holiday, but they wanted to keep St. Nicholas. And, of course, St. Nicholas Day has always been a part of the Advent or pre-Christmas season, so they kind of transferred me to Christmas Eve. Bringing presents, especially to children, seemed like a pretty good use of my time, don't you think? Though it's not all I do. I'm the patron saint of children, sailors, a, a lot of people. So, Santa, can we talk about your flying reindeer? Wait, that looks like our parents' car heading this way. Maybe it's time to go. Oh, gosh. What time is it? It was supposed to be all done by 7 or so. Oh, boy. It's way after 7. Sorry, Santa. You were supposed to be leaving. I know you're busy this time of year. Well, remember, Veronica, saints are capable of some pretty great miracles. So I have a way of working with God to make things work out. Hey, Luke, is that you? Hey, kids, send Luke on over. We have good news. Veronica, Peter, Claire, you sure you don't want to ask Santa for something for Christmas? No thanks, Santa. And well, we figured you might be one of Santa's helpers anyway, huh? 
Though that doesn't mean he doesn't deliver the message to the outro, Santa. Well, I'm surprised to learn you think I'm an imposter. <laughs> I thought you children knew that saints are capable of all sorts of things, with, with God's help. Hey, guys! Guys, come here! You won't believe it! Okay, Luke, we're coming. What? What is it? Good news, huh? Hey, guys. We just came from the hospital, visiting the Schillers and Sam. None of us can believe it. One minute, Sam's just practically comatose with a terrible case of pneumonia. Then almost in an instant, he sits up, looks around, and asks for something to eat. At first, we thought it was some kind of fluke, but the doctors looked him over and said there was no sign of his illness at all. Like, a, uh, a... Uh... A miracle! It was a miracle! How long ago did this happen? Well, not long ago, Peter. Once we knew it was for real, the Schillers asked if we'd head down the street and get Luke and tell you guys. Ooh, ooh, what time did he get better? I bet it was about seven, wasn't it? Or a few minutes after? Well, yeah, Luke. How did you know that? It was Santa. I mean, St. Nick. He prayed for Sam right then. See, he's right over there. Wait, he's gone. He can't be gone already. We'd have seen him leave or something. Peter, he really is gone. He disappeared almost. He was the real St. Nicholas. He was. He was. He can't have been, can he? Wow. Shoot, there's just one thing. What's that, Claire? Man, I should have told him what I wanted for Christmas. 